The three-letter acronym, the EDA, has, has been on the lips and minds of a lot of people in Front Row in Warren County over the last year or two. Today we're in the Royal Examiner Studio with Front Row Warren County Economic Development Authority Board of Directors Vice Chairman Jeff Brown and Ex Executive Director Doug Parsons. Gentlemen, you've both come on in the last year. They say, careful what you wish for. Um, how have you been able to balance your time trying to straighten out what you walked into and the economic development job that is an EDA's responsibility for the communities that create it? There's, there's a lot of juggling to be done there. How have you guys found the time to do both? Or if you've had to do both? Well, we absolutely <laughs> have had to do both. I would say in terms of just juggling time in general, I have a very understanding wife. So <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a benefit because uh, the, the board has really had to spend a lot of time. Um, and uh, our strategy has been uh, that um, uh, some of the board members spend a lot of their time on uh, help, dealing with the, the mess that's been left behind. Uh, the, the, the lawyers, the banks, the contracts, and, and everything that, that goes with it, so that we can free Doug up really to focus on economic development. I mean, that's why we're here, really, is to be doing that. So um, uh, it, we stay very busy. <laughs> we play whack-a-mole, if you will. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, I think we're making real headway in it. Doug, why don't you speak to the economic development side? Yeah, well, and, <clears throat> and just to add a little bit to it, um, uh, toward the summer, uh, Ed Daly, our chair, and, and Jeff and the rest of the board worked to form committees, the Assets Committee, Communications, Finance, um, and um, uh, let's see, what am I missing? Finance, Assets, Communications. Executive. And the Executive Committee. And we channel a lot of our work through there. So the Assets Committee handles the properties, prospects, and so forth. So as I work with the prospects and, and the various um, things that we have to look at for our properties, you know, we work with the Assets Committee there, and they've been a great help. Greg Harold has a lot of experience in, in real estate and construction management and he's been an enormous asset. Uh, Jory Martin, our treasurer, has put a lot of work in on our budgets and so forth. So we have a good system in place to deal with the volume of work that we have, and it has allowed me to be able to organize and prioritize my time and, and concentrate on the things that we need to do. As far as economic development work, um, you know, I've been very fortunate here lately. I've been able to get out and meet more with our existing businesses and, and do business retention activity and, of course, handle the new prospects we have as well. How would you say your time is spent in general in, in a normal circumstance between those two major things, business retention mm -hmm. and expansion <clears throat> that's in their game plan versus going out and finding new businesses to bring to the community to expand the commercial tax base? Is it a 50-50 proposition or is it just change I think it's probably week more, to week, month to month? Yeah, I mean, it varies, but I think overall it's probably two to one retention versus recruitment. Um, you know, 80% of your, your new jobs in any given community across the country come from existing businesses. And it's much, much more easy to help a business that's struggling and keep them from leaving than it is to attract new businesses. And of course, you, you want to do both, but um, being able to get out and visit with our existing businesses has allowed us to identify companies that are expanding. And we've been able to bring resources to the table from the State Economic Development Office, uh, Lord Fairfax College for workforce issues, um, and, uh, and other resources around the region to help those companies that are expanding. And we've had a couple companies to say they've needed some help with a couple of things. We've been able to bring resources to the table for them as well. And you have announced a few sales recently, which I know has been a priority trying to get rid of some, <clears throat> some I don't dare I say albatross properties, but and, and other good properties that you have. Um, so that's right. bringing some revenue in. Absolutely, yeah. We were we were very fortunate to sell our 404 Fairground Road property uh, to Excelsior Enterprises, uh, Jack Donahoe and Dan Beller, uh, local businessmen who are expanding and, and investing here in Warren County. Uh, we're glad that we were able to keep them here in Warren County, and we're going to get a lot more activity up at that property. Not only will Timberworks have their 
expanded operations up there, but there's going to be office space available for startup entrepreneurs, small businesses. So a, a small business that's maybe looking at moving out of their house and getting their first office space, you know, that's the kind of um, that's the kind of space and situation that would be very appealing to them, I believe. And speaking of office space, I don't know if you want to touch on this just briefly. How is the uh, solar panel situation on the roof of your office complex on Kendrick Lane going? I know there's been plans and then RFPs out mm -hmm. to get those removed. And, and a good thing that I found out at a meeting a couple of months ago, they're not attached to the roof. They're set on the roof. So it's not going to be the major tear the roof project apart. But right. I know you've got RFPs out now. Um, does it look like that'll be accomplished in the next few months? Well, we're currently advertising right now. Um, we have had some interested parties uh, contact us. Uh, Jory Martin, our treasurer, who's also on our assets committee, has uh, taken the lead on that project, and we certainly appreciate all of her hard work. But I think she has had a couple people contact her, and it looks like there may be a viable option there. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about the EDA becoming insolvent in March. What, what does that mean and what are you doing to deal with the eventuality if it does occur? Well, you know, insolvency means that, you know, in, for the time being you're unable to meet your financial obligations or pay your bills. Um, of course, we've seen this coming. Um, we've planned for it. Uh, we've been working with the Board of Supervisors, the Board of Directors. Uh, again, Jory has spent many hours putting together proposed budgets uh, for the remainder of fiscal year 20 and for fiscal year 21. And we've worked very closely with the Board of Supervisors to let them know what our um, debt service needs are going to be going forward and what our operational needs will be. And of course, um, it'll be up to them to decide what they want to do. Um, I guess related to that, I don't know how much you can talk about this since it is skirting litigation, but uh, there is some dispute with the town over what I understand to be an uncontested <clears throat> debt of over $8 million, I believe $8.3, $8.4 million on the principal payment on the new police station. Mm -hmm. I think there's no dispute that they owe you that money. There's some dispute about the interest rate. Um, there are other projects, uh, Leechron Parkway, West, the West Main Extension at uh, the Abtex property. Um, and there's the litigation where they've sued initially for $3 million and then upped it to $15 million, I believe. Mm -hmm. You're, you have litigation trying to recover a little over $21 million. Um, how is this additional litigation in an adversarial way with really a municipality that is your co-creator dating back to the 1960s um, that you've reached out to how is that problematically impacting your ability to deal with what we were just talking about, the coming insolvency? Well, you know, obviously uh, uh, not being able to collect on the police department affects our, our, uh, our financial situation. Uh, regarding Leech Run and West Main Connector and the other projects, you know, we want to be very careful that we go through each of those projects and ensure that when we do arrive at an amount to invoice both the town and the county for all of these projects, that these are legitimate amounts. You know, it is so important that we get these things right and that we don't rush and we make sure that uh, what we're billing for are truly legitimate expenses related to each of those projects. So that's the most important thing to me. And, and I guess it would be vice versa on the defensive side you're really not trying to hold out on the town money you owe them, are you? I, I know in front of me at least twice I've heard you offer to sit down and try to come up with an exact number of what you do owe the town and the county. Sure. Um, is there a need for this litigation? Well, from I feel, your perspective. Well, I mean, in, in my opinion, you know, and I've mentioned this before, I think it'll be finance professionals and accountants that help us solve that issue versus. Uh, attorneys and I think that you know I, I'm always ready to sit down with the town and roll up our sleeves and and work to arrive at what that number may be um, and and so we um, were always hopeful that uh, that the town would would agree to do that you know we're we're spending a lot of money on attorneys a lot of the taxpayers money on attorneys when when I feel that that we could do this without going to court 
And I know the mayor has thrown out an olive branch at a recent meeting expressing the exact same desire to sit down, maybe initially with, but eventually without the lawyers. Um, do you feel that the mayor may be influential in bringing the council and town staff around to that need? Because I guess town taxpayers are in an odd position here. We've always talked in the past about the double taxation on town citizens for services that all county citizens get. I guess you have town taxpayers paying for the town side of litigation and for your alls in the county's defensive side. They're paying for everybody. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that uh, as servants of the public, we should be trying to sit down and negotiate these things out. And if we can't negotiate them in, in good faith, uh, then maybe you go to arbitration. If arbitration doesn't work, well then you might go to uh, litigation. But to, to have to start with litigation, to um, reserve over $200,000 to pay for litigation expenses, um, seems to me to send the, the wrong message for the town, county, and EDA to work together. We want to work with the town. It makes sense econ you know, economic de for, for economic development and, and just for presentations to uh, uh, businesses that either want to expand uh, here or uh, to, to move here. So uh, uh, the, the, the problem that is created is it creates a sense of uncertainty and if you're a business and you're looking to expand or to move here and you go, well, let's see, the, the governments are fighting each other, uh, there's uncertainty here, maybe I'll just look somewhere else. And the reality is uh, in the state of Virginia and West Virginia and in, and in the rest of the states, there are plenty of places that are more than willing to, to say, hey, come, come to our place. And, and that's the thing that concerns us uh, the most. We're, we're willing to sit down and work with the town. We have yet to see a bill of particulars, which would tell us what, what things that they are concerned about and that they feel like we owe them for. Um, and uh, we've, we've told the town, uh, 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 the mayor directly, that if there's something that we owe, if, if they can show us, for example, on the police station, that um, the EDA board voted for a 1.5% interest rate and to give them that, we would honor that. Uh, so it's really just sitting down, starting to cooperate and work together again, and that's really what we're all about. Well, maybe there's a hopeful sign. There was a uh, town envisioning meeting last night, mm -hmm. and uh, the interim town manager, Matt Tiedrich, was there with a meeting facilitator with a lot of downtown businessmen on establishing future guidelines for major events, festivals downtown. So if he can have a facilitator for that, maybe he can bring a facilitator, arbitrator, to the table with council to talk to you all. I think it'd be a great idea. Absolutely. Um, related, the town has launched a legislative, a state legislative initiative to be allowed to create its own independent EDA that would function only within the town limits mm -hmm. unless the county authorized other, otherwise. Um, at the recent liaison meeting, Supervisor Tony Carter commented that uh, that initiative made no sense to him, and it was a duplication of effort and expenditures. Uh, do you all agree with Carter's assessment, and if so, why? Well, you know, to start a new EDA, you know, there's going to be a Oh, and then maybe investment. if you explain, they would maintain their membership with you all, with the county. So they would actually be the first municipality in the state's history, I understand, to be simultaneously a part of two different EDAs. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think, I think that's something that uh, the council is going to have to look at. Uh, we respect their decision. Um, I would estimate, you know, to have an organization similar to ours, you're probably looking at a half million dollars a year uh, for a budget uh, to hire and maintain staff and to have a basic level of activities. If you get into marketing for tourism or community development projects or business attraction, especially, you know, retail and commercial for downtown, you know, you can, the sky's the limit on what you, you can spend on marketing, but certainly I would imagine another one hundred dollars to $200,000 to really have a significant presence in the marketplace and, and try to bring in new business and work with your existing ones. I would add to that that um, 
anyone who's ever been in marketing or sales know that it's the connections you have and the people you know are going to are going to help your ability to sell uh and uh, it takes time to develop those connections. I know in my business, it took me years to re be able to get to people that I could go to and say, hey, can you help me you know, you know, get to this contract and to make it work? Well, in, in Doug, we, we have somebody who has um, you know, statewide experience and statewide contacts. He's, he's has uh, experience doing this. He, he, he knows people uh, and he knows who to call. And those are all things that take, you, you, you can't suddenly go, oh, well, here, we, we put money into it, we have it now. It just takes time to do that. So it's a, a lengthy process uh, to do it. Um, I, I, would, I would echo what Doug said, is that if they decide to do it, we would work with them. But the reality is that e even if they have their own, um, they're still going to have to work with our EDA. We're going to be coordinating on a, on a daily basis, and you really do have duplication of services. And maybe we should revisit for a second the fact that we were talking about insolvency and the ability to meet your debt. The EDA, while it has debt built up through the economic development projects, can't just disappear and declare bankruptcy. Legally, we cannot. You, the municipalities, I guess, would have to, one way or the other, absorb... Um, your debts. Yeah, it's not only the debts, it's the bonds. Um, so the process is, is pretty lengthy, but we would have to be totally debt free. The EDA board would have to vote to dissolve itself, and then the entities that created it would have to vote to dissolve it, then you could dissolve it. But you'd have to ask yourself, uh, how often has that been done? And the answer is never because there's good reasons to have a strong economic development presence um, anywhere, uh, and but particularly here where we can really use it. And the CDA, I think, was co-created by the town and county back in the mid-late 1960s. So there's been a serious hiccup now, but overall, I think the Front Row Warren County EDAs had a fairly good track record. Yeah, the North Corridor look, Development right. is an example after Aptex closed. Right. Yeah, I think Stephen Hefner did an incredible job in recruiting companies like Family Dollar and Interbake, um, Cisco. I mean, it is not easy to recruit enormous 800, 900,000 square foot uh, uh, operations to come to a county. You think of the cost and the headache that's involved in a relocation for a company. You know, it's a very serious endeavor for them. And from everything that I've heard and seen, uh, you know, Mr. Hefner did an incredible job in that regard. All right. Well, having traversed this uh, operational and litigious landscape, and we can say in conclusion, the olive branches out from the EDA. Absolutely. Always. To talk to all parties Always. and minimize the need for expensive legal fees. And, and if I may, I've had nothing but good experiences in working with the town of Front Royal staff. Um, I could get down the list. Um, literally everyone there. Some of which you may not be there anymore shortly. But. Right, but, <laughs> but truly everyone that I have worked with um, has been fantastic, whether it's been a planning and zoning issue, um, you know, the, the situation where we had repairs on the apartments here a while back, um, you know, both the town and the county were fantastic in helping their issues at 404 Fairground. Um, just at every turn, the town staff's been very professional and very helpful. And, and I really appreciate that. And my olive branch remark was tying me into, not that cleverly, what we do <laughs> want to talk about is alerting people to an economic, or an economic and physical threat to the community from the spotted lanternfly, which there was recently a seminar or meeting out at the Inland Port on this. I think the spotted lanternfly first was spotted in America, not pun not intended, in Pennsylvania back in 2014. It showed up in Frederick County last year, I believe, or the year before? In 18. 2018. And that's obviously an imminent danger to us. And there was a comment at one of the recent monthly EDA meetings about Pennsylvania, where it's been for five years. Last year had a half a billion dollar economic impact on Pennsylvania's economy. That's what they estimated. So we're trying to stop the lanternfly from coming into Warren County or anywhere else in Virginia 
um, what should citizens and businessmen in this community know to try to spot the spotted lanternfly and eliminate and report it? Yeah, there, there's um, really two stages to it. One is to be able to identify them and that they have four stages that they go through. And then if, if they uh, get here, uh, then uh, it's, it's reporting it and uh, then eliminating them and trying to minimize uh, their impact in, the, in, the, uh, in Warren County and in Front Royal. So uh, we had a lot of very good interactions. So there's a ton of information out there. Uh, we've created a, uh, a website um, uh, uh, that, that uh, will give people information about it. But I thought I would show, um, this is a, one, here's, here is what most people see them looking at. Um, and I will say that so, we plan to insert some larger graphics yeah. into this video to help yeah. these uh, graphics that we have in our hands. But you can see it, it, it looks like a very colorful butterfly. Uh, and that's the fourth stage, uh, the, the mature stage of uh, uh, spotted lanternflies. And it's very small, what, about an inch and a half by two inches? Maybe? Well, that, yeah, for the adult ones, they're pretty, that's, that's big, that's a big right, bug, okay. uh, if, if you will. The, uh, the other stages, though, are very tiny. Uh, the first stage, which is what we're in now, and this will go probably through some time in May, they're egg sacs, and um, they attach uh, 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 to barks, to vines. Uh, they love rust for some reason, and they'll actually attach to it. And this is, this is uh, one of the best ways that they move is that they attach themselves to things like trucks and to cars, and then uh, they, they, they get dropped off at some point, and suddenly they're here. You know, it's it's not surprising that the second place in America that um, got it was Virginia along 81, uh, because you have tr the truck traffic going back and forth. So that's the first stage. Then the the second stage, uh, when they're young nymphs, they're black and white. Uh, they're they they look like a bug. They're 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 tiny. Um, and Jeff, uh, in the these process. other priests pre-adult stages, are they, they're all non-flight, aren't they? They're all non-flight. Um, uh, actually, the, the, the uh, um, spotter and lanternflies really don't fly very much. They fly a little bit, but they're mostly hoppers. Uh, but if they keep hopping and, and then they get uh, attached to either to trucks or to cars uh, or to people for that matter, uh, then of course they, they move with the flow of uh, humanity. And of course the truck is not the ultimate destination. Fruit trees, oh yeah, grapevines, right? Things that are in the vineyard businesses in this area, yep, are what they're looking for. Yeah, they they, they look for um, uh, uh, certain trees and uh, 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 grapes are their favorite, but they have a number of things that they will they will go after. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is having a public relations. Uh, when I do this, uh, before I get to that, I'll just finish these two. So the next stage in the summer, um, uh, they, they get a, a red body and, and they have uh, the white spot still. And then this is the final stage that goes into the late summer into November. Uh, and, and this is what they look if, if, they're not, if they're not flying and they aren't spread out. So those are stages that, um, what we want to do uh, here in Warren County is first run it and uh, get it so that everyone's looking for them um, and um, uh, they're identifying them. The state is already uh, beginning to come in and uh, look for certain properties that they can they can come and check very carefully to see if they see egg, egg sacs and we, and we get an early jump on it. Um, so that'd be the first stage. The second stage is they're they're in the county and then we're trying to minimize them. So there's a process for reporting them to the state. Uh, there's a lot of help to, uh, to spray and to, to, to contain these things um, and uh, to, to eliminate them. So if somebody had a question about how to report it to the state, then I remember, could they call the EDA up locally? Is there local they, ways to yeah. get in touch with the state? Right. Um, there's a, a number of ways. The, uh, 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 you can almost go uh, anywhere into a, a state uh, uh, government and, and report it. The fastest way, um, please report it to, to EDA. Uh, that would be great. The Virginia Cooperative Extension at Virginia Tech would be another. Um, and His name is on this document. Which is on, right on the document. Uh, and uh, 
Uh, they're they're really leading the charge on the on the science uh, uh, of exterminating uh, uh, this infestation. Uh, and um, the other thing we'll be doing is is on a regular basis. Um, uh, having things available for the public to help them identify and how to report and, and do this. And it will include a website for information, a phone number to call, and uh, what you report when, when you actually report it. So uh, that's uh, all things that we're, we're rolling out because this is important for business uh, here in, in Warren County. Um, we are a transportation hub. You don't think of Warren County and Front Royal as that, but the reality the is we are. The lantern presentation was at the Inland Port. It was at the Inland Port. There are only two Inland Ports on the entire East Coast. Um, they, it's, a, it's an incredible um, thing that we have here. We have two trains that cross in, in uh, Front Royal. We have two major highways that uh, come together in, in Warren County. Uh, and, and you have a, 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 a UPS hub uh, right here that will, uh, uh, so in many ways, these are all things that will be affected if, if we have to do what Frederick County has done, which is to go into a quarantine. It'll slow what we do, it'll cost us money. As, as you pointed out, this, the state of Pennsylvania estimates it's a half a billion dollars just last year. Uh, for it, and it will get bigger as it grows. So it becomes something we have to look at really seriously. I mean, it could have a huge impact on this county's economy with the inland port there and transportation, us being the known transportation hub we are that's brought the port here. Yep. I mean, the threat of it spreading regionally would be tremendous right. if it got here. Yeah. Now, there are things that they uh, that they do. Uh, once, once you have it identified in an area... Um, the uh, uh, the businesses will get training on on what to do and what to look for. Um, they have to certify each truck, for example, has been looked at in a, in a certain way, and that they've examined the cargo to make sure that these things aren't aren't uh, um, you know moving in the in the cargo or or in rust spots and and going from there. So there there are things that you do to minimize it, but we want to try to our best to keep it from ever getting here if we can. So we get everybody to clean the rust off their vehicles in Warren County right now. That'll be a step one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cover well, up your grapevines. So, right. So. Well, um, I think we'll close on that note. And uh, people have any questions about the spotted land or fire, contact the EDA. They can either answer them or point you in the right direction. And uh, this, I think, is going to be the first of perhaps monthly reports we're going to be doing with the EDA? Yeah, we'd like to do them on a regular basis. Uh, we, we think that the, the public has a right to the, the transparency, to know what it, what it is that we're doing, what we're doing to avoid what happened, uh, 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 you know, the uh, catastrophic failure is how I once described it, and, and I still think that, that that's an apt description. We want to avoid that from ever happening again. That was again. the quote of that meeting, by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, Which I believe was back when everybody was talking to each other, a three-way joint meeting between the EDA, the town, and the county. Yep. And that's part of, I think, the reform committee, which has fallen apart amongst all this litigation. Yeah. Which would be a good thing to resurrect. Absolutely. Well, we, if, even if yeah. under another name, uh, probably <laughs> under another name, but uh, not it, the Reform School Committee, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but but I do think that we uh, we we do want to work with the town. We want to uh, resolve issues and start to work together. It makes sense. We're we're a single economic unit. The the town is entirely encompassed within Warren County. Um, and it's and while it's uh, a separate government and, and se has separate separate decision making, we still are tied together on economic development issues, and we can work the best together if we start working together. And I think that's a good closing note. Uh, Roger Bianchini with Jeff Brown and Doug Parsons. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you.